welcome to Mental Health Chats and we're continuing the chats on menopause and today we have got Catherine Curtis with us. So hello Catherine, how are you going? Hello, how are you? I'm good, thanks. I'm very well, thank you. Um, so Catherine is going to be talking about menopause and hormonal depression and Catherine runs a company called Simply Hormones. So Catherine, I'm, I'm intrigued by what you do with, with Simply Hormones. So can you explain to us what you do? Yep. Uh, Simply Hormones started about 12 years ago. And as a result of my own 10 years of hell of going through menopause, not understanding, I didn't recognize that I was going through menopause uh, for some considerable time. Diagnosed with depression, I still didn't know it had any bearing uh, from my hormones. And then I thought, well, what do I do with this? I did a lot of research, but I've got all this information. Nobody's telling women what they need to do, what they need to know. And I ended up designing a website. Uh, a friend of my daughter's helped me do that. And so that was the very start, just get it. And it had 400 pages. <laughs> wow. <laughs> tell everybody everything and uh, so we're on about the fifth iteration of that website now and what we do is support women and provide information not only to women themselves but to the workplace as well to managers oc health hr all the departments in the workplace to help support those women and understand what they're going through and why they're having these this crazy time at work and, and sometimes causing problems and challenges so we want to avoid all that happening with a few simple steps if everybody understands what goes what's going on then we can do something about it and so that's what we do at simply hormones with our training courses and our professional trainers who are our menopause ambassadors brilliant so i was actually going to ask you how do you do that in the workplace so you've got training courses you've got professional trainers yes um, so do you do one-to-one -one coaching as well or keynotes yes. yes we do yes i go out doing keynotes being it's all online now all our trainings online we've got interactive so what used to be our workshops have now been put online and um and are working very well people it's going down well we're getting good response from it and I do keynote speaking, which I now don't have to travel to and uh, on a variety of topics, not just menopause. I will also do it on, um, I, I can't think of a subject now, but, but other matters around developing a business, for instance. You know, how, I, how did I get my business together and make a success of it? Because uh, over the period of 12 years, I've wanted to give up on many occasions so it's not an easy task for um, a small business to do and i've now got a very good team around me and we're building on that and lots of new yeah. stuff happening over the next few months so you've explained why you started simply hormones which is great mm -hmm. to understand it's obviously very very close to your heart mm -hmm. and the topic today is around menopause and hormonal depression so mm -hmm. what is the relationship between menopause and hormonal depression? Uh, well, I think it's, uh, it might not be well known. I was about to say it's well known, but it's not. There, are, There is research out there that shows women throughout their reproductive lives are more likely to experience mental health issues uh, than the average person. Um, especially at menopause when it can be five times four or five times higher don't quote me on that but it's it's much much higher and i was astounded when i read those statistics and only to discover that there is such a thing as hormonal depression um, and it was one day i was interviewing professor john studd about mental health. He's a well-known gynecologist uh, professor, obviously, uh, former chair of the British Menopause Society. And I had a great time with him interviewing about different subjects. One of them was mental health. And he was telling me about mental, uh, about hormonal depression and how if a woman has perhaps experienced uh, postnatal depression, she uh, PMS, she sometimes feels a bit uh, melancholy or can be related a bit to depression, then her 
own medical history is telling the doctor that she potentially will be susceptible to hormonal depression at menopause. And, um, and through that experience, and then, then I went on to ask him because personally, apart from being diagnosed with um, depression myself and then now relating it to, to hormones, who knew your hormones could be capable of doing all these things? I then self-diagnosed with bipolar. And I know bipolar is a very serious mental health issue and uh, it requires medication and it goes on for a considerable length of time. But I was ticking all those boxes and I'm thinking what's going on. And so I'm sitting in front of Professor Stout and thinking, dare I ask him this question, which sounded a bit daft to me, you know, shall I ask him, will he think I'm an idiot? You know, all those things going through your mind. I asked him and he said, of course, my dear, bipolar, it's, transitional obviously was a short space of time is so very common in women going through menopause really who knew, who knew? who's That's telling crazy. women we think we're going mad yeah. we think we've got real mental health issues and it's hormonal in the majority of cases it's hormonal and so a completely different pathway. You don't need the antidepressants. You just need to understand more about your hormones and, and learn how to balance those. Now that may be through HRT or it may be through other methods. I'm, I'm not uh, promoting anything in particular. That's down to the individual. But it's just acknowledging the fact that your hormones are so capable of creating such chaos in women's lives as they go through menopause and not being able to recognize it we always point to something else somebody else's fault so that that's actually really opened up my eyes mm -hmm. that our hormones the wording that you use was our hormones do affect our mental health and mm -hmm. there are times where my hormones have been out of sync mm -hmm. and i wasn't aware that that was the problem that i had yes. So well, let's do. bring yeah, let's bring all that together. And what tips would you give women going through menopause or feeling like they've got hormonal depression yeah. to help themselves be more positive? I think the first thing to understand, and you may have covered this already, is the age group. So if you fit in the age group between 35 and 55, then you are perimenopausal or getting on for postmenopausal. And sometime during that time, any or all of those symptoms may affect you to a greater or lesser degree. So think about your age. Think about your monthly menstrual situation and how it's affecting you because you can get to sort of 48, 50 in a general perspective where you're going through a tsunami, as I call it, when you feel out of control and you can't remember anything, you can't talk. So take your age into consideration. Look at your, your menstrual, menstrual situation and what's going on in your life. And potentially it's menopause is at the foot of it. Secondly, um, leading on from the first part really, is again that physical awareness of your own body. What's going on? How are you feeling? Um, you, you're feeling out of condition in a way, you're not thinking properly. Women's perception changes as they're going through menopause. So to be aware that that's happening means that you're not gonna have a fight with someone. You can stand back and say, oh, hold on a minute. Is it my hormones again? And thirdly, something completely different, drink plenty of water. Because I know nothing to do with mental health, but constipation can be a real issue with women. So if you make sure you have your plenty of water, two litres a day, especially a good slug of water as you rise in the morning, and room temperature water, please, not uh, anything ice cold because that's just brain freeze. So drink plenty of water. Um, take some exercise and eat properly. Watch your nutrition. It's time to change your lifestyle and that can benefit you moving forward and the rest of your family. That, that, they're brilliant tips. Now, can I just go back and ask you a question on why room temperature water and not ice cold? So I know the brain freeze, I understand yes. that, but well, that's it. Else you, for the body? You, 
if you yes if you imagine uh you're walking into a freezer your body you automatically do that well that's what your internal organs are doing they go who did that <laughs> very good it's point. normal temperature then uh it's accepted and it does everything it's supposed to do they're fantastic tips and i'm very excited to say every morning i get up and i have two pints of water within wow. an hour yes. at room temperature <laughs> i'm very proud of myself there so yes. thank you catherine for those tips they're You're brilliant welcome. Good. and the nutrition part is really really important so i'm very excited to say we've got emma dawson on our next chat who is a nutritionist and she's going to talk about how nutrition helps hormones and menopause yes yeah. which is very very important to go into that in detail so we've got emma next yeah. so thank you very much catherine you've been very insightful i love your passion <laughs> and i love your enthusiasm and wow starting a business mm -hmm. and making it so successful when you're felt so low is incredible so well done thank you thank for your you time much. thank you okay. Thanks, Claire. bye Take now care. bye bye